Hey guys, my name is Ben, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to use Caltopo Maps. I'm going to show you some tools that you can use, as well as tips on how to use it to plan backcountry trips. So when you first log into Caltopo, it's going to look something like this. You just type in any search engine, Caltopo Backcountry Maps. It'll bring you to this site. So you just go up here, top right corner, big orange box, but start mapping. So this site is super nice. It's completely free to use. You can pay extra if you want more advanced features like weather forecasting and more stuff like that. But the free version has everything you need for backcountry planning. So when you first pull up, if you hit start mapping, it'll pull you to a screen like this. It might ask you to so sign in. I'm already signed in. Just sign with Google. It shouldn't be a problem. It doesn't cost any money again. So then once you open it up, uh, right here at the top, there's a search bar. So you can just search whatever area you're looking for. In this case, for the example, I picked Shenandoah National Park. So you just type it in and then hit search. So now it'll bring you to there. But let's say you have a specific landmark inside the park that you want to see. My favorite hike there is White Oak Canyon. So if I search that up then it'll take me right there this is a very nice feature because you don't have to spend hours scrolling through an area trying to find a specific thing you can type in any like lake any landmark it will take you right there so then once you have that let's say you want to mark that for your to be able to know where it is so you go over here add on the left hand side uh first one down is marker it'll pop up for red dot you can drag that anywhere you want. So I'm going to drag it up here. Like right here, let's say. And you just type in what it is. So this is a waterfall. And also with this point, you can change the color. Let's do black. You can add comments depending on where it is. Like location-wise, it'll give you the coordinates. You can adjust the size. And also a nice feature is if you go to style, it will pull up with a pop-up menu like this. And this has all sorts of different types of things. You can make it look like a flag. If you want to make it what direction you want to go, campfire, you can use any letter in the alphabet. If you want to do P for parking or T for trailhead. And also very nice if you come down here to recreation, you can do shelters, you can add campsites, this one I use a lot. If there's other landmarks that you want to mark, whether it's a rock scramble or a meadow or just anything you want to add, you can change the what it looks like. So let's say I just want to keep it as a dot for right now. And let's say I want to get another landmark. So I'm going to go up here, go to add marker again. can only add one at a time so got to finish that so you go add marker let's say I want to go up here so we'll just say maybe this is a summit of a mountain or something so I want to change the style to a mountain so there's that and let's say I want to change the color back to red once you have the two points then let's say you want to go in between them so you go up here to add, right next to marker is line. If you click that, it'll pop up all the trails and roads will turn yellow. So then all you do is click one point. And if you go to the next point, it will automatically calculate the fastest way there. Double click when you're done. And so once you have that, then you can go up here. It'll tell you the mileage as well as kilometers. If you go to profile, very nice feature. It will tell you elevation for every mile you go. And that is a super nice feature when planning a trip because you want to know if you're going to go up a mountain or stuff like that. And if you go down to terrain statistics, it will pop up with a bigger thing telling you the exact location at the exact point, as well as tree cover, the slope, um, 
the what type of land it is if it's rocky if there's forest and it will be very helpful when you're planning a trip if you say if you want to camp in the woods if there's going to be a thunderstorm anything like that so once you do that you can also go to travel time it will tell you it's estimated time it's pretty accurate but that depends on your skill level as well as if you're stopping and that kind of stuff so for this one it just says three hours probably pretty accurate you can print map as always and that's a super nice feature if you want to have a hard copy you can print any map you make so let's say i'm done i mean this is not very good but let's just say i'm done so if you go up here you can hit save you just type in a name uh example you can choose to always show where it left off if you want to make it private url type a little description about your map then hit save and it's loading so now whenever you open up your account it will come up if you click on your account it'll come up with all of the maps you've created and you can just click to open one so open this and you can also share your maps with other people using the url or email stuff like that and if you want you can also go to measure here measure distance let's say i want to go from here to here double click at the end and it'll pop up with telling you how long it is so that's very helpful over here on the right hand side you can see it will show you you can adjust the contour levels you can have it slope angles and it'll tell you what kind of land it is if it's national forest national park you can see if there's fire history in that area, sun exposure, um, total snowfall on the ground. You can come down here to weather and you can adjust like what the temperature has been there. So let's just go 24 hour snowfall. So it hasn't snowed there in the past 24 hours. And let's go 24 hour temperature. So now it'll shade the temperature based on what it is it looks like it's about 35 degrees there right now so that is always nice because you can check accurate weather data and super good for planning also on the left side you can check water gauges if you're going to do stream crossing or weather stations if you're up on a mountain and yeah that's pretty much everything on the right side so that's more of like details about your trip and stuff but in terms of planning wise, just figure out a location, type it in the search, add markers, add lines. You can adjust, make a loop if you want, and you can do everything. So with the line, you can also resample, extend it or reverse it. And you can split and rejoin another line, which is very helpful if you have two lines and want to join it. I'm just going to do an example of that real quick. So let's go over here to add another line. And I'll just say from right here over to here. And you can also make a line that does not go on trail if you are doing a little off trail action. And that'll tell you the distance. And now if I go over here to join, first I have to edit it because you have to name your line. You can just say trail, or if it's a certain day, whatever, you can name your trail. And now if I want to do this, I can just join. Join with trail. And now it's one continuous line. So that is very nice. If you want to split it again, just hit split. Okay, now it's two separate. Super nice feature. You can extend the lines. You don't have to restart everything. Just extend it if you're going off a little bit of side trail or anything like that. So that's just about it. This app is super nice. Highly recommend it. It's the best map that I've been able to find when it comes to planning a trip. And it's super helpful. All the features are super nice. And if you want to export your map, you can 
go here, export to GPX is what I normally do. And I have a GPX app on my phone so I can check the map even when I'm offline and my location on that. Very helpful if you, you can also print it if you want a hard copy and yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any more questions, you can check out my channel. I have a lot of other information about planning a backcountry trip and what gear to bring. And you can always comment below if you have any other questions.